Well, hello. Today I'd like to welcome you to my first impressions, not of a Mont Blanc 149, but of a pen that is somewhat, <laughs> somewhat comparable. This is the Jin Hao X159. So let's take a look at it and uh, we'll talk toward the end about how I think this model compares to the original Jin Hao 159, which I've reviewed on this channel a few years ago. So let's dive into it. So this is the Jin Hao 159X. Uh, I thought I had a regular Jin Hao 159 around, but I think I gave it away. So we won't be able to compare, but the original Jin Hao 159 is a metal bodied pen and has a Jin Hao logo here. So let's take a closer look at the pen. It's dusty, you can see that in this light. <laughs> it's a big thick honking pen. It's got you know decorative trim ring here. Trim ring here makes it look like it has a piston turning knob, but it's not. Um, no, no bird splat. Open it up. We have a. Let's see if I can read that in this light. F fine nib. And there we go. Oh, badly lit when I get it up here. Let's try this. So I'm experimenting with some different lighting. So that's the nib and feed. And it's a cartridge converter pen. With a vaguely um, lami like converter. So what would we put in a pen that looks like a Mont Blanc 149? How about... A nice drink of Parker Quink Washable Blue. That was awkward. Holy cow, that's on tight. <laughs> there we go. I just had to use my left hand to get it. So this is a fresh bottle, so that should be fun. I think we all see some nice bubbling going on there. And let's call that good. Got a nice fill on it with two snorks. So Jinhao 159 X, fine point, although it looks kind of like a medium. Uh, as far as how it feels, I remember one of my complaints about, about the original 159 was it was big. This is big. I'm a little more used to big now. I've, I have that uh, Pelican M1000 that I like. But definitely big. Not heavy, though. Very light. So we have Parker Quink. Let me know about the lighting, I think. Let's see here. Let's just... Dial up the exposure a bit, see how that works. So I have Parker Quink, washable blue. So, of course, by the time you're seeing this, I've probably experimented with the lighting a lot and I've got it worked out, but you know what? This is my first time ever with the new lights. Uh, flex, I think you can already see that not a flex nib, but it definitely has some line variation. Not bad. Wetness and flow. I'm kind of curious what I'll think after I do a long writing session with it, to be honest. Um, you know, I'll talk about that, of course, in my comments after the video, or, or yeah, after the writing sample. You know, that's how these smear tests work. I, jeez, that's how these uh, first impressions work. I uh, write with the pen you get my first impression and then I uh, actually write with it till I run through its first fill and then I talk about it. So reverse writing. It's very smooth. It, it kind of has a little lag to it but nothing bad. It's not a bad nib at all. This is a little scratchier and definitely an extra fine. Maybe even ultra extra fine. 
and of course the world famous Pierre Gustafson test. I watched a, I think it was Miss Marilyn Darling did one, uh, filled an ent almost an entire page with this. So definitely a much better Pierre Gustafson test than I do. But I think it passed it very well, so I am quite pleased with this pen. So we'll see how I like it later. Does it give me an itch to buy a Mont Blanc 149? No. <laughs> but not a bad little pen. So that was uh, the Jin Hao 159. I will admit that I, I was pleased writing with it. You know, I wrote the pen dry. I uh, cleaned it out for this video. Um, I kind of didn't put the nib back in it yet, but uh, the nib is... I'm making sure it's clean. But anyway, the nib is actually my biggest objection. You know, the writing with it was okay. Uh, the section... When, when I reviewed the original Jin Hao 159, I thought, oh, that's kind of a big honkin' pen. Uh, since then, I've used a couple other big honkin' pens, like a Pelican M1000. So, you know, that objection doesn't stand. So I think um, maybe my objection back then was more big honkin' pen plus really, really heavy. Because the original 159 was made out of metal. Uh, the newer version is plastic. I'm pretty sure it's not Mont Blanc's uh, precious resin. But, uh, you know, it's, it's much nicer to hold. I like that it doesn't have that weird shield on the clip. I think that's a better look. Uh, I, I think all in all it's an improvement on the original pen. I will tell you, though, that for this pen to become a daily writer for me, I've got to do something about that nib. That just isn't that great of a nib. So I got to thinking that, well, I'll just buy a new nib. Or I've, I've got a number of nibs floating around the house because I'm a fountain pen guy and that's how we roll. Except the nib in this pen is a number eight nib. Most of the nibs I have floating around in the house are either vintage nibs, which I knew those wouldn't fit, or number six nibs. Yeah. So... I can't fit any of my nibs in it. And so then I thought, okay, so what do number eight nibs cost? Well, so far I haven't found any. I'm sure they're out there. I'm sure I can buy one somewhere. I just haven't found where. So, eh, I'm not super thrilled with that. Um, no, the nib was not stellar to begin. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't stellar. And, uh, Lacking other redeeming qualities. I'm just not... The, this Okay, this pen just earns a big meh from me. I'm not as excited as other people were about it. Um, the fact that it has a number 8 nib does not excite me. Because I can't really seem to find a place to replace. But admittedly, I only checked two places. And then I thought, do I care enough about this pen to try? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm that bad a person. So, uh, this pen, it was cheap. I put only the cost of the pen into it. So, uh, I think it's going to go in my batch to give away. So, don't expect a follow-up. You know, I'll, I'll link it up for pens in use this week. But, uh, I feel like this is a real downer video. <laughs> but, I think it's important to be honest about pens, even if they're meh. Don't hate it, so I guess that's good. It just fails to excite. So, I hope that was useful. I hope that was interesting. I want to thank you for watching. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.